welcome to the Geomestic channel. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the second of what we call the special right triangles. If you didn't catch the first lesson on the 45, 45, 90 right triangle, you can find it up here. And if you'd like to follow along with today's lesson, click on the link in the description below to access a printable guided notes worksheet, which will follow right along with this video. Now to get at the second of the two special right triangles, we're going to start with an equilateral triangle. In an equilateral triangle, uh, by definition, all sides are congruent, and thus all angles are congruent as well. So um, to get at these angles, you can take 180 divided by three. That'll tell you that all these angles are 60 degrees. We'll leave that one blank for a minute. So 60 degrees for all three. Um, now to create our right triangle, we're going to uh, essentially split this triangle in half by drawing the perpendicular bisector of this segment down here. I'm gonna go ahead and put some letters for points. So we've got triangle ABC is the equilateral triangle. I'm going to draw the perpendicular bisector of segment AC. Perpendicular meaning uh, I'm gonna cross it at 90 degrees. Bisect means to cut it into two congruent parts. That was the worst line of all time. Let's try that again. Close enough. So the perpendicular bisector, I'm gonna call this point down here where it hits, is point D, which is the midpoint of segment AC. So it's gonna bisect that segment down there. And perpendicular, meaning it crosses that segment at 90 degrees. So we got a right angle down there at the bottom. Okay. Um, now because we've bisected uh, this base right here, we've also essentially bisected that top angle. So we're gonna put, uh, instead of 60, we're gonna cut that in half. We've got 30 and 30. Okay, and you can see our right triangle right here. You can tell why we call this the 30, 60, 90 is because that's what the angles are in that triangle. Now, we're gonna call this short leg AD. We're gonna call this segment um, length X. So AD is X. Now because X uh, is over here on AD, it's also the same over here in DC because again, we bisected that segment AC. So X is here, X is also here, which means that whole segment AC is really just two X. Okay, so the whole segment is two X. And since this is an equilateral triangle, we know all three sides of this triangle would have to be two X as well. So I'm gonna put two X over here on this segment AB, which you can see is the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So cut the thing in half, this right triangle over here, we've got the short leg AD is X. The hypotenuse of this triangle is two X because that's just the length of the entire side, X and X. Okay, now this segment right here, BD, if I wanna know the third side of this right triangle, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what that length is in terms of X. Since we already have two of the sides in terms of X, I can use Pythagorean theorem to get that third side in terms of X as well. So if you remember the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, where A and B are the lengths of the two legs, and C is the length of the hypotenuse. So if I take A squared, which is X squared, plus B squared, which is this long leg right here, we don't know what that is, we'll just call it BD, equals C squared, the hypotenuse squared, which is 2x squared. So Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, end up here. To solve this, um, we're going to square what we have over here on the right, x squared plus bd squared equals 2x squared. If I square the two and I square the x, two squared is four. x squared is just x squared. And then to solve for BD, we're going to subtract that X squared from both sides of this equation. X squared minus X squared is zero. We've got BD squared equals, so I've got four X squared minus X squared. This is really one X squared. So four X squared minus one X squared would be three X squared. And last step, if I wanna know the length of BD, this is BD squared, so to get rid of the square, I'm going to square root both sides, which will leave me on this side, which is BD, that's what I want. 
and then the square root of 3x squared. Okay, I can break that up into the square root of 3 times the square root of x squared. I know the square root of x squared is just x. And then the square root of 3, I'm just going to leave it as the square root of 3. So BD, that length right here, that longer leg of this right triangle, is x times the square root of 3. Now remember that x was just the length of that short leg. So in reality, BD, that length here, that long leg, is just the shorter leg, x, times the square root of 3. Okay, so generally speaking, if I put this all together, okay, we can say in a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, 30, 60, 90, the hypotenuse is double the length of the short leg. So I write it out here, this is the 30, 60, 90 call that x, the hypotenuse is double the short leg, or two times the short leg. So if the short leg is x, the hypotenuse has to be 2x double. And then the longer leg, I'm just going to abbreviate here, longer leg is equal to the shorter leg times the square root of 3. Okay, that's what we got when we did the Pythagorean theorem. So short leg times root 3. So algebraically, this is what we have for our rules for 30, 60, 90. And if you just use the, the reference triangle here with the short leg being x, hypotenuse is double 2x, and then the long leg is x times the square root of 3. All right, so let's do some examples. So knowing this relationship in a 30, 60, 90, notice that your short leg is kind of the important part just because the other two um, pieces depend on what the short leg is to get those. So let's start with something really simple and then we'll kind of work it up to something a little bit more difficult. So again, these rules only work in 30, 60, 90 right triangles. You have to know that the angles are 30, 60, and 90 um, for these properties to hold true. So start with something very quick. Doesn't take much effort to get these. In a 30, 60, 90, let's say your shorter leg here is four, and you didn't know the lengths of your hypotenuse or your longer leg. Okay, so using the rules that we just talked about, if the hypotenuse is equal to two times the short leg, I can use this, plug in what we know, and solve pretty quickly. The hypotenuse is y, we don't know what it is, but I know it's equal to two times the short leg, the short leg is four, and two times four is just eight, double. So I really don't have to use algebra here. I can just say, if the hypotenuse is double the short leg, double four, you get eight. Okay, along the same lines, if I want to find the longer leg, that little formula said the longer leg is equal to the shorter leg times root three. Again, plug in what we have. Longer leg is x, shorter leg is four, and four times root three is just four root three. So these can be really quick little shortcuts to figure out these missing pieces. Okay, so that's one where we had the shorter leg. What if we don't have the shorter leg? Let's say this time we know the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is 10 and we're missing the shorter leg and the longer leg. Same rules apply. We know the hypotenuse is equal to two times the short leg. So if I plug in, hypotenuse is 10, which is two times the short leg. This time the short leg, we don't know, two times x. Divide both sides by two, and we'll have x is five. Or if you think, if I double x to get to uh, the hypotenuse, or double the short leg to get to the hypotenuse, I would just divide by two to get backwards. Um, from the hypotenuse to the short legs, just divide. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Okay, now once I know that the short leg is 5, that makes getting the longer leg pretty simple. You just multiply. So y is the longer leg, short leg is now 5, multiplied by root 3, and you get 5 root 3. Okay, 
last example uh, gets a little squirrely if you know the long leg. So let's do one of those. So here we're going to say the long leg is six, missing short leg, missing hypotenuse. Okay, so let's start with this one. We know the long leg, so let's start with long leg formula. Long leg is equal to the short leg times root three. Okay, this time we know the long leg is six. The short leg we don't know is x. And x times root three. Okay, so algebra says that we have to divide both sides by root three to get the x by itself on this side of the equal sign. So if we divide both sides by root three, root three over root three is one. And we'll have x equals six over root three. Now I've talked about this uh, before when we were talking about roots and radicals and how to leave your answer depending on your problem. Um, more likely than not, you're going to be leaving your answer in simple radical form. In that case, we're gonna have to rationalize the denominator here. Um, check your instructions though. If it says, you know, write your answer as a rounded decimal, you just type that in your calculator and you're good to go. But since we're gonna leave this in simple radical form, we do have to rationalize the denominator. How do you do that? We're going to take six divided by root three. We're going to multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by the square root of three. And again, we can do that because root three over root three is just one. We're not changing the value of this um, answer here, but we're going to multiply straight across six times square root three. It's just six times square root three over the square root of three times the square root of three is the square root of nine and the square root of nine is just three. So root three times root three is just three. And then last but not least, you can do some reducing here. Six over three, these are um, whole numbers here. So six over three is just two, and then we'll leave the root three as is. So this is really two root three. So we've got x, which is six over root three, to simplest radical form, which is two root three. So x is two. Okay, finally, last but not least, to get y, I'm gonna forego the algebra here because we know that the hypotenuse is just double whatever the short leg is. So if the short leg is two root three, if I double that, meaning multiply it by two, two times two root three, we'll get four root three. There we go. Now, having both of your special right triangle relationships kind of just sitting in your back pocket, that's gonna help out tremendously down the road uh, when you venture into trigonometry. So these rules about long leg and short leg, and if you remember the 45, 45, 90, the, the hypotenuse is root two times the leg. Um, that's gonna help you out a lot down the road. So that's it for today. If this was helpful for you, be sure to let YouTube know by giving this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the Geomestic channel if you'd like to see more of these videos. Thanks a lot for watching, we'll see you next time.